Let's talk about the art of rebellion in the short story Bartleby the Scrivener by Henry Melville. So for a tiny bit of context, this short story takes place in a law office during the mid-19th century. We are introduced to four characters. The first one is the unnamed narrator who owns the law firm. And then the next two are Turkey and Nippers, who are his subordinates. And then the fourth one is the office's errand boy, Ginger Nut. Just as a side note, while Bartleby is the main character in the story, he hasn't been introduced yet, and the main focus of this video is the narrator's views on Turkey and Nippers. As we read through the story, it is important to note that Melville intentionally wrote the unnamed narrator as an unreliable one, meaning he can choose to tell the story however he sees fit. Unfortunately, this gives the narrator complete control of the situation. Nevertheless, it is because of this bias that we are able to see the prejudices the narrator has against those that he deems beneath him, and, more importantly, his co-workers. So to quickly summarize the narrator's biases, this passage from page 9 shows his opinion on Turkey. He first deems Turkey as a man of so small an income that he could not afford a lustrous coat. So the narrator, wanting to boost his own ego and make himself out to be a good person, offers his own coat to Turkey one day. He expects Turkey to be extremely thankful for this act of kindness, and when Turkey isn't, suddenly the narrator turns around and calls him insolent. Said the coat had a pernicious effect on him and even compares Turkey to an animal, a horse to be specific. But most importantly is the last line of this excerpt, the fact that the narrator claims that prosperity harmed him. This view shows, that the, shows the narrator's extreme bias against the lower working class, as well as people in poverty. He believes that those who are poor do not deserve good fortune because it will change them into disrespectful, insolent people. The hypocrisy of it being that he himself acts entitled. So now that we know the true nature of who this unnamed narrator is, let's jump into Turkey and Nipper's art of rebellion in the office as told by the narrator himself. Turkey is described as being an older man, similar to the narrator himself. However, unlike the narrator, Turkey appears to be losing himself. This is what the narrator thinks of, at least. Sure, he's an efficient worker in the morning, but as soon as it hits noon, suddenly there were ink blots upon his documents. Turkey makes loud noises with his chair, snaps his pens, and makes just a huge mess throwing his papers around. The narrator condescendingly says that this is truly a very sad sight to behold in a man of Turkey's age. To be honest, when I first read this passage, I didn't see Turkey's resistance as art. I mean, don't get me wrong, I really appreciated it. I mean, I kind of wish I could do this too. It's like making a mess in order to waste the company's time, the company's resources, rebelling against the company. Like, if I could do this, I would. But. Then I thought about it a bit more, and mess can actually be art. And to show you what I mean, I decided to recreate what Turkey did. Look, this is what I made. This is a video script for um, another video essay I had to do a few weeks ago. And so I took this script, and I had this art, this watercolor palette and I just like started scribbling all over it and whatever filled it up with a lot of color and sure it doesn't look like much I mean I made it and even I would admit that but art is very subjective and it doesn't always have to look good for it to mean something for me I just wanted to destroy this because this project was causing me quite a bit of stress. I just decided to paint all over it 
and just like put a bunch of colors that I really liked on it and it made me feel kind of happy. Art is like an expression of how you feel. We've seen this like many times with authors in history who will like just draw something that people don't typically understand what it means but they think that it's very beautiful but then when you look at the author's past their history like what they were going through when they drew that then you begin to like really see and realize um the deeper meaning behind the pieces so when you see this it kind of seems like i was trying to destroy this paper and the words written on it, which is true because I did not like this project very much. I tried further to connect with Turkey's character by trying to recreate how he would throw tantrums, like snap his pens, throw his papers all over the floor, make loud noises with his chair. It may not be art in the traditional sense, but Turkey's actions actually create a cool effect as the papers are like fluttering down, as the chair is squeaking across the floor, as the pens clatter against the desk that being thrown. It's like the music of rebellion. Moving on, let's now transition over to Nippers and his torturous writing desk. Nippers is seen as almost the complete opposite of Turkey, He's disagreeable in the morning, but settles down and starts doing his work around the afternoon time. He's very irritable in the morning, which manifests into how he treats his desk. Nippers is constantly changing it to fit his preferences. One day he's making it taller, putting chips under it, blocks of various sorts, pasteboard, and even trying to add folded sheets of blotting paper to it. Unfortunately, nothing worked for him. This example is easier to be seen as rebellious art. Nipper saw his desk almost as a place of torture. His adjustments to it are artwork. He's making something new from something that doesn't work for him. It's not a perfect comparison, but we do this all the time with like clothing pieces we buy that don't fit us or clothes that no longer suit our current styles. It's like recycling. I've also seen this done on like social media where people will buy some like old knife that like looks really bad and then they'll like polish it until it looks pretty much new. They weren't going to use it before but now that they've changed it into something that looks really nice, you can use it. <laughs> it's like they're giving it a new life. And that is kind of the same way as what Nippers is doing. This desk doesn't work for him, so he's going to destroy it, kind of, and build something new from it, something that works for him. This is also rebellious because he's using work time to do this. The resources as well, just like how Turkey was doing, he's like using folded sheets of the blotting paper to like shove on the desk. It's art. Sure, Nippers and Turkey's passive rebellion doesn't quite deserve the spotlight that Bartleby's blatant refusals do, but I still think their resistance is more beautiful and creative in a way that differs from Bartleby's. Thanks for listening!